Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner. This week I've got two nights of dinners for you, and then I also have a really yummy dessert planned. Um, I am bringing back Subby Supper this week. If you are new here, Subby Supper is just where my subscribers, my subbies, send in their favorite recipes, and I choose one each week, and we make it, and I let you guys know the recipe, obviously, but a little bit more about that particular subscriber. Our first recipe this week is a really easy one, and it is a kind of a Mexican type dish. It is Fiesta Chicken Casserole. The first thing we're gonna do is start cooking this. We've got rotini pasta. You can use whatever pasta you want to. I'm gonna do two cups of it and just cook it to al dente, and then I'm also going to, come down this way, I'm gonna shred this rotisserie chicken. I'm just salting my pasta water. And I've got two cups of uncooked rotini that's going in. And we'll cook that for about, or boil that for about eight minutes. Okay, so we've still got a good bit of this chicken left. I'm gonna put this back in the fridge. But this is all of the chicken that we're gonna need for tonight. Somebody over here can't stop eating it. I don't know how much will go back in the fridge. <laughs> also, we have someone else over here. You want some chicken? Oh. I dropped some and I didn't even realize it. There. Was it good? Okay, so we've got our pasta cooking. We are going to combine some more of the ingredients. We need about a cup of sour cream. It's about half of this container. We need a cup of salsa. I have this salsa. Um, I think this is a 16 ounce. Yep, so about half of this. The recipe calls for specific spices, but all of those spices, I believe, are in my taco seasoning. So I'm just gonna use taco seasoning. I'm gonna have the recipe linked below so you can see all of the ingredients listed, but I'm gonna add my taco seasoning. Now I'm just gonna combine all of this. I've got our oven preheated to 350. I've got a nine by 13 pan. I'm just gonna spray it with some Pam. Now that I've drained our pasta, I'm gonna add it into this sour cream mixture. Now I'm gonna be adding in some corn. The recipe calls for a can of corn. I had some frozen corn, so I'm adding that in. A can of black beans that I have drained and rinsed. Our two cups of shredded chicken. And I've got two cups of shredded cheese here. We're gonna add about half of that in now and we'll be putting the rest of it on top of the dish. Now I'm just going to pour all of this into this baking dish, top it with the cheese, and then it's gonna go in the oven. I'm just covering this with aluminum foil. This is gonna go in the oven covered for 20 minutes, and then we're gonna take the top off and let it sit for another five minutes to kind of brown up a little bit, and then it'll be time to eat. Okay, it has been 20 minutes. So I'm gonna reach in here and take the aluminum foil off, maybe. There we go. It smells really good in here. Oh no, there was some cheese on there. I have to scrape that off. <laughs> Let's leave it back in there for five more minutes. So we don't have Steven here to do a taste test tonight. He had to go somewhere. So it's just me and Cole for right now. So we're gonna try and do our best taste test in honor of Steven not being here. We gotta make him proud, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Steven, I mean Cole. It smells good, right? 
Don't be weird. <laughs> yeah, this looks really good. Okay. Uh-uh. What's this? Oh, was that touchdown? What is that? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yay. Mm -hmm. You like that? It's like everything's mixed in there, but I can taste everything. Good. It's like nothing's just, you know. It's not like one big mush. Yep. Okay. Good. Mm, that's really good. Good, buddy. I'm glad. Are you sure you're ready? Oh, yeah. Just kidding. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. I love the rotisserie chicken in this. I feel like you could do ground beef. You could do whatever, but I really like that rotisserie chicken. It hangs onto the sauce really well, and so do the noodles. This is really good. Okay, for tonight we are having awesome sauce chicken, hopefully on the grill, if Steven is gonna be able to grill out for us tonight. I don't know, it just depends on his work schedule. We're also gonna have deviled egg potato salad, and our subby supper tonight is green beans. They are called sweet and sour green beans. I'll show you that in a little bit, but first I'm going to go ahead and prep our marinade for the chicken, and we're gonna go ahead and make the deviled egg potato salad. The first thing I need to do is hard boil these three eggs. So I'm just gonna use this little contraption. I've talked about this plenty of times before. I've got it linked in my Amazon store. I love my egg cooker. It is amazing. I use it all of the time. So I'm going to hard boil these three eggs. The original recipe calls for three pounds of potatoes, but I'm halving the original recipe because that has 12 servings and we don't need that many. So this is about maybe a pound and a half to a pound point seven five ish <laughs> of red potatoes. Again, the recipe calls for Yukon gold potatoes, but I'm just going with what I have. I had just a few hamburger dill chips, pickle chips left so I am going to go ahead and just chop these up these are gonna go with the potato salad um, I was just gonna use regular pickles but when I saw that I just had this little bit left I think this is the perfect amount for my potato salad okay my eggs are done I am putting them in an ice bath now just to cool them down a little bit and then we're going to peel them and separate the egg or the eggs the yolks from the whites just like you would if you were making deviled eggs just drained my potatoes. I boiled them for about 12 minutes until they are fork tender. They are gonna go into this bowl along with my pickles and then I'm also going to chop up all of my egg whites and put them in there too. Because I'm cutting mine in half, um, I'm doing obviously half of all of the measurements. If you want the original recipe, I've got it linked below. I'm gonna do about a half a cup of mayonnaise, about a tablespoon and a half of mustard, about a half a tablespoon of vinegar, some salt and pepper, and I'm gonna add all of that into the yolks. And then the paprika will go on top at the end when it's time to eat. But for right now, I need all of these ingredients to go in here and mix together. Okay, now I'm just gonna pour this over this, mix it all together, and we're gonna refrigerate it for at least a couple of hours. It may be a little bit longer until we're ready to eat, but that'll give all the flavors a chance to meld together and everything will cool down. Now to prep the awesome sauce chicken. These are the three, ing three ingredients we're gonna need. I'm a little upset about this one. 
I thought it was just honey mustard, but it's supposed to be honey mustard dressing. But we're just gonna have to use regular honey mustard. <laughs> um, we'll need a third a cup of each of these. Honey mustard, teriyaki sauce, and some type of hot sauce. I got the Sweet Baby Ray's buffalo wing sauce. So we're gonna mix the three of these together, a third a cup each, and just pour it over some chicken and let it marinate for uh, several hours. I've got four very thin chicken breasts here. It was actually two chicken breasts that I cut in half each of them because they were so thick. So I'm gonna add these to this plastic bag and I'm gonna add most of the sauce in there for them to marinate in. I am gonna keep out some of the sauce to um, baste it when it's on the grill. So now it's time for our subby supper portion of this meal. It's a side tonight. It is sweet and sour green beans and this was submitted by Jayma. Jayma lives in Tennessee and she has been married for almost five years. Between her and her husband, they have five children and she said she really loves to cook and with such a large family, she's had to learn how to cook really big meals and make them go a long way. She said this is basically the only way that she can get her whole family to eat green beans. We're really excited to give it a try. It includes bacon. You know, sign us up, right? Thank you for sending it in, Jama. We can't wait to give it a try. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is take our bacon and fry it up in this skillet. The recipe calls for eight slices of bacon. I only had five left, so we're just gonna go with that, but I just went ahead and pre-cut it. Um, I just use kitchen shears to cut it up. It's the easiest way. And we will brown all of this up and we will take the bacon out, leaving the fat behind. While our bacon is cooking, I quartered this onion and I'm just gonna chop it. I'm gonna use this dicer. I've got this um, chopper dicer linked in my description box below. I've had this thing for like three, four years and it is just as good as new. I love this thing. Okay, so I've removed my bacon and now we're gonna add in our vinegar, our sugar, and our chopped onion. So we have equal parts vinegar and sugar, that's the sweet and sour, uh, six tablespoons each. So I'm gonna add in the, sh mm, I guess I should add in the vinegar first. Let's do that. The sugar. And our onion. Okay, so we're gonna cook this until the onions are translucent and pretty tender, and then we will add in our green beans. Okay, these are nice and translucent. I'm gonna add in my green beans. I've got two cans of green beans. She uses French style, but I could not find that at my grocery store. I did drain these before adding them in, and we're just going to let this heat through while our chicken is cooking. I'm gonna put a lid on these since it's gonna be a little while, and I am gonna turn the heat down as well. Right now it's on medium high. I'm gonna turn it down more like to medium low. And we'll put the lid on that. Steven was not able to grill out tonight, so I just put these on a um, foil-lined broiler pan, and I'm gonna put these in the oven at 375 for probably about 30 minutes. good baby <laughs> it smells good it looks good it does mm -hmm. and that sauce I just have a feeling it's gonna be delicious mm. wow 
<laughs> there it is, folks. The wow. <laughs> that sauce. It's good. Oh man, sweet, spicy. It's got just, I mean, I, I love the, the blend of it. It's got that kind of the spice in the front here and then it's got the kick in the back and the good what, sweet. What's in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> sweetness. There you go. The sweetness to it, savoriness to it. It's really good. Awesome. Mmm. Mmm. Is it good? Love it. It's delicious. Okay, so this is. Beans, I love the style of these green beans. I love the big fat green beans. The Italian. Mm -hmm. So this is the subby supper. Mm. Oh, that was a good reaction. <laughs> Man, what is in these? Uh, that is so delicious. Vinegar, the bacon. Vinegar, onion, sugar. Wow. That's it. Mmm. That's a yes. Awesome. <laughs> I gotta talk about it a little bit. Okay. It's fantastic. It's not, it's, I love the subtleness of it. Like you bite into it and you're just kind of like, and then, and then it just starts to hit you and you're just like, wow. I mean, it's just, it really it doesn't take away from the flavor of the green bean. Like it's just, I don't know, it's just incredible. Awesome. Okay, Cole, what do you think about our subby supper? Ooh, that's good stuff. Happy July 4th. You're watching this way after July 4th, but that's okay. Today is July 4th for me. I've got on my shirt. We are going to my parents' house in just a little bit. Stephen and Cole went to go see Stephen's mom for a little while while I stayed here and made a dessert to take to my mom's house. I'm also taking some other stuff too, but I saw this recipe this week, and honestly, I didn't wanna make it with just the three of us because I would eat most of it. So I thought, what better time than to make it for a big crowd of people, not a big crowd of people, it's just my family, but still. So I'm going to be making a chocolate and peanut butter pudding pie with bananas. Here's everything we're gonna need. Um, we need some whipped topping. You need a nine inch pie crust. You can make your own. The directions actually tell you to get chocolate wafers. Um, I couldn't find any. So I ended up just buying a pre-made crust just to make it that much easier on myself. Two cups of 2% milk. You need two packages of 3.4 ounce instant vanilla pudding mix. My Walmart only had vanilla and then they had French vanilla. Like they only had one vanilla left, so I had to get one of each. It'll be okay. I'm gonna need three fourths a cup of creamy peanut butter. You want two firm bananas. You're only gonna need two ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. And that's it. I've got a couple of bowls over here that I'm gonna be using, but let's get started. The first thing you would do is make your crust, but since I'm using a pre-made crust, I'm just gonna go ahead and melt my chocolate and my peanut butter together. I need two ounces, so I'm just gonna eyeball this. That's probably more than two ounces, but that'll be okay. And to this, I'm gonna add three-fourths a cup of creamy peanut butter. Again, I'm just gonna eyeball this. This is gonna go in the microwave for one to one and a half minutes, and I'm gonna stop it and stir it every 30 seconds. We just want to get it all melted together until it blends together really smoothly. While I've got that chocolate melting, I'm gonna go ahead and slice my bananas, and then we're gonna arrange those in the pie crust. Okay, so this is really smooth now. Just going to pour it all over the bananas. We're just gonna set this to the side and mix up our pudding mix. We need both pudding mixes and two cups of milk and we're just going to whisk it together for two minutes and then we're gonna let it stand for two minutes. So this has been sitting here for about two minutes. I'm gonna add in a cup of whipped topping and just fold that in together, and we're gonna spread it all over top of this. Now that I'm done, I'm just gonna cover it and stick it in the fridge for about three hours. 
It'll end up being more like five or six hours before we eat, but it needs to refrigerate for at least three hours. And I will try and remember maybe to film my dad doing a taste test. He would love that. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> That's my daddy, folks. <laughs> this is awesome. Is it good? I, I love it. It is really good. It looks really good. It is. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -mm. How about that pie? <laughs> What's your favorite part of that pie right there? Nothing. Out here to Brody, say hey. Uh, what in the world do you have on? I'm Batman, I'm Batman, people. <laughs> How you doing? Where's my mask at? How you doing? How you doing? This is my nephew, Brody. This is my Uncle John. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to YouTube. <laughs> talking to YouTube. Oh, goodness. I'm a gorilla. You get money shot. Money shot. Money shot. Kind of gross, actually. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's for real good, though. Good, really good. Okay. Thank y'all so much for watching this week. I hope you enjoyed this What's for Dinner. I'm really enjoying including a dessert as well. Let me know if you like that extra feature. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And if you haven't already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family. Hit that red subscribe button below before you leave. And I will see y'all next time. Bye.